Smarter technologies for research in space. For more on the trials and tribulations in the field, we're joined by an expert from the Astrophysical Institute, Potsdam, Dr. Torsten Carroll. Thanks for joining us. Dr. Carroll, let's look into the midterm future of space travel. As we just saw there in that uh, report, redesigning the rocket drives could theoretically make longer trips possible. What comes after Mars? After Mars, certainly we heading for uh, the gas planets, which are Jupiter, Saturn, and Uranus, and Neptune. And, but to travel to these gas planets, it may take us another technological step forward. And, but I'm pretty sure that we will do, and we will make it to the gas planets. Do you think we'll ever be able to leave our solar system? Well, probably not with uh, man, man-based uh, spacecraft, but but I guess with robotic spacecraft, we we try to to heading towards our solar neighborhood, as we actually did do with Voyager, for example, which is heading towards the outer space. And but even with the spacecraft like Voyager, we would take some seventy-five thousand years to reach the closest star, Proxima Centauri. Your 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 research is actually um, connected with looking for what are called exoplanets, planets in other star systems. How do you find them? Well, actually, what we are looking for is a little tiny flickering of the star. And this tiny flickering actually tells us more than just the star is unusual. It can tell us really stories about what is going on in the vicinity of that star. So we're looking for a little flickering or a little movement of the star, which also tells us something that there might be a possible candidate for an exoplanet. Now, 50 years ago, a little project was called up, uh, set up called uh, SETI um, to look for signs of life from outer space by searching for radio signals that are too regular to be random. Um, we've got a lot of false leads over that time, but no clear indication yet that anybody else uh, is out there. Do you think that the time that we spent on that project has been wasted? No, not at all. Um, it is uh, unfortunate that we haven't uh, detected any signal. And one has to be honest that, that these were very ambitious goals, actually. Actually, something like finding the, the needle in the haystack. But I'm pretty sure that it's worthwhile spending for looking for these radio sig signals and, and, and try to get in contact with other probable intelligent life forms. Now, in your research, what, what's most important as a tool, ground-based telescopes or space-based telescopes like the Hubble? Well, still ground-based telescope doing a lot of the work, but the space-based telescope become increasingly more, uh, more uh, in, important in the future, and, and there are an interesting, very interesting uh, projects going on from NASA and ESA for space-based projects and um, devote, uh, directly dedicated for, for, for these extrasolar planet research. Now, just briefly, how long do you think uh, it'll be before we start discovering large numbers of Earth-like planets? Um, maybe not too far in the future. I guess in the next 10 to 20 years, we might be able to find really Earth-like planets like ours. All right, Dr. Tarsen-Carroll, mm -hmm. thank you so much for joining us.